Welcome to a presentation concerning dental amalgam mercury hygiene for dental students. This information was spawned from a study conducted by Drs. Warwick, O'Connor, and Lamy in their time as dental students from 2010 to 2012. In the methodology of their research, measurements were taken with a new calibrated Jerome 431X mercury analyzer with the detection limit of 0 0.003 milligrams per meter cubed, while drilling out amalgams with high-speed dental drill on mannequins in a fully equipped dental suite. The Jerome was utilized as per manufacturer's directions. Air was sampled through an ear loop surgical mask provided by the faculty's dispensary. Samples were taken with water and suction and without water and suction. 25 measurements of each scenario were taken 38 centimeters from the working area and data was analyzed by the faculty's statistics department. The results of their study showed that without the use of water and high volume suction, 36% of the readings breached the mercury vapor ceiling limit set out by Alberta Occupational Safety of 0.125 milligrams per meter cubed. All of the samples taken while using high volume suction and water were within safe limits as set out by Alberta Occupational Safety. The research indicated that traditional ear loop masks are not protective for mercury vapor. Some of the data collected for this study led to an investigation into another source of mercury exposure for dental students and the staff of the school. The particulate from the drilling of amalgam fillings appears to be a significant source of mercury for patients, staff and dentists. The Jerome does not measure particulate. Most of the particulate from amalgam removal is less than 3 microns in diameter and 65% of the particulate is less than 1 micron. Traditional ear loop masks are not protective of this particulate. Inhalation and skin contact of this particulate likely causes a greater exposure of mercury than the direct vapor when removing amalgam material. Most of the information on this slide is based on a 2003 study conducted by Dr. Mark Richardson. Dr. Richardson conducted a risk assessment on the use of dental amalgam for Health Canada, which was completed in 1996. In this animation, you can see how the particulate may embed itself into the alveoli of the lung or onto the skin and become the source of a formidable amount of mercury, that can be uptaken into the student or dental worker's body. The IAOMT and Pure North are currently conducting research into mercury exposure from the particulate produced when amalgam is removed with a dental drill. There is information in the scientific literature that also indicates that installing amalgam can create a significant exposure to mercury vapor. The concentration of mercury vapor from installing amalgam can exceed occupational ceiling limits in the immediate vicinity of the freshly triturated material. This has the potential to be absorbed through the skin or inhaled. Levels of mercury vapor in the steps of installation have been measured to reach the following levels. Trituration, 2.7 mg per meter cubed. Loading the carrier, 0.57 mg per meter cubed. Condensation, 0.454 milligrams per meter cubed. Wet polishing, 0.590 milligrams per meter cubed. Dry polishing, 4.29 milligrams per meter cubed. And just for a reminder, the Alberta occupational ceiling limit is 0.125 milligrams per meter cubed and that this amount is never to be exceeded. There are additional considerations. Mercury vapor is absorbed via inhalation and through the skin. Skin needs protection from both the mercury vapor and amalgam particulate plumes. In order to improve safety, the exposure ceiling rates should be considered for the patient as well. Health Canada recommends protection for patients and dental workers. The World Dental Federation recommends 
precautionary protocols. The 2011 Alberta Occupational Handbook for Dental Workers under the Mercury Hygiene Section recommends protective clothing, gloves, and breathing protection. So what does adequate protection look like for students and staff? Hooded Tyvek suit, full face mask, integrated mercury vapor rated filters, plastic shields on filter canister to protect from particulate, nitrile gloves, nitrile rubber dams, high volume cleanup suction, copious water when drilling amalgam, auxiliary high volume air excavators, mercury absorbent cream for areas at risk of exposure, pre-operative preparation of patient with mercury absorbent rinses and nutritional agents, mercury impervious patient drapes for face and body, alternative air supply for patient, environmentally responsible disposal of contaminated sundries. Based on the information we currently have, this is the new standard of care. Dr. Robin Warwick, Dr. Andrea O'Connor, and Dr. Brianne Lamy thank the faculty and the statistician team for helping them to conduct this research. The researchers, as well as the International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology and Pure North, thank you for listening. Pure North and the IAOMT are committed to making dentistry safer by continuing research and education. Although the implications of this presentation may seem ominous, Pure North and IAOMT are committed to helping the U of A continue to be a leader in the education of safe and effective dentistry.